What up YouTube fam? Jay Harkin here and welcome back to another episode of Colin Jay. Today is a little bit different because I have had a horrible last few days. I have fallen victim to poison ivy and today I'm here to help you learn how to identify it and how you can treat it if you do come into contact with it. As you can see, I have three different plant specimens. One of them is the toxic poison ivy. The other two are harmless. Do you know which one's the poison ivy? If you don't, you've come to the right place because Jessica and I are going to help you learn to identify poison ivy from the other plants in the forest. Now, one of these plants looks very much like poison ivy. The other one, not so much, but you could get it confused. One of these plants acts and looks like poison ivy while the other is actually an agent that can help you treat a poison ivy rash. Without further ado, let's figure out which one is poison ivy. The scientific name of poison ivy is Toxicodendron radicans. It is a poisonous Asian and Eastern North American flowering plant that is well known for causing an itching, irritating, and sometimes painful rash in most people that touch it. The rash is caused by the poison ivy oil called Urushal. It is a clear liquid compound in the plant's sap. This species is variable in its appearance and habit, and despite its common name, it is not a true ivy. It is actually a member of the cashew and pistachio family Anacardiaceae. Poison ivy is commonly eaten by many animal species and the seeds are consumed by birds, but poison ivy is most often thought of as a very unwelcome weed. There are many different subspecies and varieties of poison ivy and they can be found growing in many following forms, all of which have woody stems. It can be found as a climbing vine that grows on trees or other support systems, as a shrub which can reach up to three foot tall, or as a trailing vine on the ground. The leaves on this plant are deciduous, meaning that they fall off in the winter time, and they can range in color from a light green to dark green, and they turn a bright red color in the fall. The leaflets of mature leaves are somewhat shiny, and each leaflet has few or no teeth along its edge, and the leaf surface is smooth. The flowering period for poison ivy occurs from May to July. The berry-like fruit matures by August to November with a grayish white color. Fruits are a favorite winter food of some birds and other animals. Seeds are spread mainly by animals and remain viable after passing through the digestive tract. Urushal induced contact dermatitis is the allergic reaction caused by poison ivy. In extreme cases, a reaction can progress to anaphylaxis. Around 15 to 25 percent of people have no allergic reaction to urushal, but most people have a greater reaction with repeated or more concentrated exposure. Typically, the rash from the Urushal oil lasts about 5 to 12 days, but in extreme cases, it can last a month or more. Over 350,000 people are affected by Urushal annually in the United States. Virginia creeper is often found growing along with poison ivy, and while it may be similar in appearance, it is actually a member of the great family Vitaceae. The best way to keep from misidentifying it with poison ivy is to remember that it has a series of five leaflets with serrated margins per stem rather than a series of three leaflets with little to zero toothing around the margins found on poison ivy. Okay, now we're going to take a minute to tell you what plant is on the board. This plant is Virginia creeper and it is non-toxic, it is harmless, but it looks a lot like poison ivy and you could easily get it mixed up. This plant is spotted jewelweed and it is known to have a sap in its stem nodes that will help you cure poison ivy rash. This is poison ivy. This is the plant you're trying to avoid when you're in the woods. While these two plant species look very similar, they are in fact quite different. As you can see, the Virginia creeper has a series of five leaflets on its stem, while the poison ivy has a series of three leaflets on its stem. That's going to be your number one key a uh, distinguishing factor between these two plants is that the poison ivy has three leaflets and the Virginia creeper has five. Whoop. Leaves with three, let them be. Now that we've shown you what poison ivy looks like, let's take a look at the awful things it could do to you. A few days ago, I was out fishing and I wasn't paying attention to my surroundings and now I'm suffering the consequence of it. Let's have a look at Jessica's consequences. It's not pretty. Oh. Yeah. Jessica has it really terrible. Jessica and I are both pretty allergic to poison ivy, so this could definitely happen to you if you are to contact poison ivy. 
While avoiding poison ivy is the number one prevention to actually getting poison ivy, there are those times when you simply cannot avoid it and you may not realize that you've even come into contact with it in the first place. This plant that I have beside me has been used in home remedies to treat mild cases of poison ivy. This is the spotted jewelweed, which we showed you earlier. And what you can do is you can break off a stem and it's really juicy, it's really succulent, and you can split this open and you have all those juices and you can actually rub it onto your infected poison ivy areas. And, it, and the juices that come from this plant have been known to help relieve the itching and other poison ivy related symptoms. Even though I've contracted poison ivy many times in my life, I'm not afraid of it. I know how to wash it off effectively and prevent myself from getting a horrible poison ivy rash. Let's go. Cole just did a dumb move and grabbed a handful of poison ivy, so we gotta act fast. Let's go! <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> okay, so we just rushed back home and we brought you into our guest bathroom because you're our guest. But now we gotta act fast because Cole grabbed a handful of poison ivy and that just wasn't very smart. So we're gonna show you the best way that works for us to remove the poison ivy oil from your skin and hopefully Cole will not get poison ivy. Okay, so we have the Dawn dishwashing liquid. This is really good, helps save wildlife. And it's going to work as our agent to help remove the poison ivy oils. There's several other different types of poison ivy soaps you can get that will help uh, you, but this is just an easy, cheap way to get it off. And at the end of the day, it's really about getting the friction, I mean, getting enough friction on your hands that you can remove the poison ivy oil. Think of the oil as like a, let's get the water going. We're gonna use cold water, you don't wanna use hot water. If you use hot water, it's gonna like open up your pores and it's going to allow the poison ivy oil to enter them. So we're gonna start with cold water. And we're gonna rub this in really good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a rag and a loofah, it's key. Lupus are really good, they can help get between the fingers. And we're gonna start scrubbing. So here we go. Let's get it wet. And let's start scrubbing the heck out of it. Let's take the old trusty rubber rub, rubber wedding ring off. Think of the poison ivy oil as like cooking oil or like car oil, like grease, and how it takes a while to get it off. You really just gotta scrub, 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 scrub. And you might get scrub the surface of your hand really good and the top of your hand, but if you don't get between your fingers, you're gonna get it between your fingers. So we're gonna be in here for a little while and we're just gonna scrub, 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 turn the water off, so not wasting water. We're just gonna scrub and scrub and scrub in between our fingers. We don't wanna sit here in the bathroom and watch y'all wash my hands forever. And we're gonna wash that off, but maintain, keep using the cold water. I might do another wash, but that will give you the basic details on how we have effectively gotten rid of poison ivy in the past if we know that we have come into contact with it. Hey guys, it's a few days later. We wanted to take a few days to see if the washing method was gonna help clean off the poison ivy oils, and what do you know? My hands look great. I don't have any signs <laughs> of poison ivy reaction, and I guess it was all due to that intense scrubbing we did in the bathroom. <laughs> We hope you guys enjoyed this video, uh, distinguishing poison ivy from a couple of other plants in the forest, and we hope that it was helpful in teaching you the ways to best identify it and how you can treat it if you were to um, rub your hands through it or accidentally touch it. Um, so if you liked the video, hit the like button for us and drop a comment below um, telling us your poison ivy stories, like let us know the worst poison ivy experience you've ever had, or if you're not allergic to it, to it at all, we'd like to know which of our viewers are not allergic to poison ivy. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you'll be notified every single time we post a video. We're, We're Cole, Cole and Jay, Jay, and we will see you guys on the next video.